Okay, Don here. Well, I uh, went ahead and took the motor out of one of them, of the newer one. I was trying to, oh now it makes a shadow on it. trying to, uh, I don't think in the video, I, I, I actually took a couple of macro, you know, pictures, but that turned so perfectly it just baffles my mind why it wouldn't work. Um, that's where I took it out of. If you see the previous video, you'll see what it is. It's a squirrel cage heater fan out of a brawn ceiling uh, heater and I've got one of the elements oh no it's in the right place I'm, I took it loose so that I could get in there without breaking it you know get in there to take that loose I had to use this I had an Allen setting in it and I had it's a pretty cool little tool <laughs> anyway I had to use that much leverage to break that loose and that's after soaking it twice from, Soaked it once for probably an hour, you know, 20 minutes an hour while I was working, and it still it didn't want to come off. It felt like I was going to break something. Then I went and ate lunch and read, looked up things up for an hour or two, and uh, still had to lose a lot of force, but it did finally come off. And see, this is the new one. It's it's about two years old now, but see, that's not even rusty in there, and it was still the shaft is rusty, but. Uh, the fan itself is up. Here's the old one that lasted about 15 years before it quit working. And this fan, I, I, today, I, this was up in the box, in the box up on the shelf. But today, I had take tried to get it out, and I, I probably never was able to break that loose. I didn't want to break anything because it's it's taken loose. I went to the trouble to get those little screws out, which were I don't know, hard to get to. Once you get the the squirrel cage off you can get to it real easy that was like a few seconds you know to get it out of there get these little little nuts off and uh, with well this is the this is the uh, nut driver so the size it is but anyway well that was what I used to get uh, yeah that's a that's a real Allen head I thought I was gonna say is that a square one, but that's what I was able to get that out with in that in that tool there. I started out with one of these and uh oh, forget it, either broke that thing. But uh, I'm going. The thing is, you can test it really easily with it all put together. But uh, so the thermal fuse was blown on both of them. They are. And well, anyway, what I found out, I used a, I just used a jump wire on here to about, you know, after I took the thermal fuse, I had a jump wire to make that connection. Uh, but that these things would heat up immediately and start smoking, so I'd have to hurry up and turn it off. I plug it into a power, you know, six way and just turn it on and off. And the other one, the fan would hum and try to go, but it couldn't, it couldn't go even when you helped it along. So this one just does nothing now I thought well what if it would work somehow you know and so I thought well now what if I could take it apart clean it up make it work like I used to could do with motors I don't see if that's the windings those are huge they should not burn out I can't believe they're really that big usually windings are you know like 22 gauge wire or something but there's some serious copper on there coming out of the outside and it goes there too I don't know maybe that's just some kind of grounding for it I would imagine I think if you were to take that all apart which I'm not going to do at least not now uh, heavy magnets I mean not heavy armature I always forget which one's which the armature the rotor stator armature all that stuff I can't I always forget my terms pretty quickly but there's nothing wrong with the bearings I mean they are great and actually I believe they are both of them yeah so uh, they stood up to all the moisture and everything and, and you can kind of see there I can't see it kind of see there that uh, it's shiny there 
it's Shane up there where the uh, Skull Cage fan was. The other one I wouldn't expect to be looking that good, but it might be once you got it off. Once I got the nut loose, I still had a pretty good time getting it out. I was able to pry on it for a little while, and then it got so far it wouldn't go any further. And then finally I started back kind of tapping on it with <laughs> actually the back end of my crescent wrench. And with it, just see, just try not to overdo it and worked it out. So, there it is apart. Uh, but as far as actually plugging it in, it's easier for it to be in there, really, other than, like I said, the heater cool, heating cool is coming on, and I couldn't leave it on long enough to really mess with it. Now I can take all these off and, like, well, I could take this red one off and I have to pay attention to what I'm doing here. I'll get it wired wrong. Okay, yeah. See, that's the thermocoupler uh, circuit right there. Thermocoupler, I'll keep calling it that. The thermal fuse circuit. So if I took and put this one over here, just for test purposes, not for running, that can end up burning your house down. Take this red one and put it over here, then I would have a good circuit, and then I could just plug it in to see, or I could take them off of here, you know. I had one of these all apart earlier, and then I put it back together. Oh, the old one, I, it was all rusty, and I cleaned it. I sanded it up. I don't know why I even did it, but I just, uh, I want to make sure that wasn't why the motor didn't run, I guess that's why. But uh, anyway, um, you could do that just to just to test it, and then you'd be bypassing the heater altogether. I think I'll, I may do that. I'm trying to think if there's an easier way. I suppose... Uh, oh, if I had that get disconnected... But then you got a live wire hanging. You got a live wire hanging out in the breeze, so that would just—it wouldn't be a heater heating element anymore, but it would be a hot wire if you disconnected it from that other. If you disconnected it from here, like this, then uh, you know. But then you know it's going to be touching, grounding out, so that would be too dangerous. So. <coughs> I don't have any clip on. Well, I got plenty of jumper cables for, I guess, uh, jumper wires. I got to, well, I got a few, not plenty, but I have some jumper wires. But I use them on DC. I don't, I don't have anything that'd be nice and safe to use for AC. I mean, I did use them on AC just now, but it was in a safe way. But uh, since they have these big old ring, uh, crimp connected old deals, anyway. I don't know. I'm just thinking and making a video at the same time. So let's stop this. And uh, if you ever wondered how to take one, well, I couldn't. I it, it didn't have a good way to set up and show while I was doing it. And it I mean, I could, but it'd take forever to set it all up, so I didn't show up getting it apart. That's the only thing that would probably be interesting to somebody that had never taken something like that apart. Anyway, this done. Bye.